This video is about creating dialogues for user input in Microsoft Access. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a dialogue in Access. That means the form, the dialogue form, is opened by VBA code. The VBA code stops until the user completed some uh, interaction with the dialogue, entered some data and confirms the dialogue or cancels the dialogue. Um, that's what I'm going to cover and how to retrieve the data that the user entered into the dialogue for further processing. We, we are going to use that in the context of a data import into Microsoft Access. That's the sample I'm going to show. But you can use the same techniques virtually with every data that the user needs to enter. I prepared this little form to import a file. You just enter a file name in here and then you can either hit that import file button or that cancel button. That's a very, very simple dialog. And um, please just see it as an example. It does not really matter what kind of dialog you um, want to implement. It can be much more complex, can contain more data, can be for whatever purpose you want it to be. The same principles apply. And I'm going to show you how to properly implement this dialog. The first thing, the first problem you are going to encounter is that you want the user to enter something in the form and want your VBA code, the code um, which opens the form, wait for the user input. And I just put in a tiny procedure in here, import file, that just opens that import dialog. It's not really a dialog yet, but it's um, soon to become, become one. And then displays a message box import complete or it would actually need to run the import process on that file the user selected. And the problem with this is if I just um, I close that form and then just run this tiny procedure, you see the first part worked. It opened the form, but the code did not stop. It ran right to my message box and says import completed while I did not even enter anything here or maybe uh, I wanted to cancel the whole stuff. So we need to improve our code to make this work. And the first thing is we need to open this form as a dialogue. And there is the window mode parameter to the do command open form method and we choose AC dialog here and now we can um, we need to close that because if the forms open already it will not work as um, we intend so if we run that now you see this form has been opened outside of the recording area that's a problem we are going to address later but that form has been opened and you see that um, message box it has not yet fired only if I close the form I haven't um, hooked up these buttons to any event procedure yet but if I close the form with the X now the message box fires and um, displays so the first step is solved our dialog waits for the user to complete it but um, it obviously does not really work logic wise because the import completed message is dis displayed anyway and there is no import in here. So let's enhance our form a little bit. The cancel button is pretty easy. We can build an event in the code builder and it doesn't do much except um, it should close our form and we can refer to me name for the form name because we are inside the form we don't want to save anything so that is our cancel button already very simple now for the import file button that is a little bit more complex and you probably wonder already how we get the user input that uh, is in this form to um, 
process that file later in our procedure? Well, first step, we create an event handler for that um, import button. That's pretty easy. And if the user says he wants to import something, we should at least provide a little tiny bit of um, data validation in here. Just say if len um, refer to the text file name field and its value. If there is entered anything that is right now is good enough for us. If not, we want to um, display a little message box. Please enter file name. Pretty simple. So the user has at least entered a tiny bit of um, information. Now we want to use this value of the text field with a file name for later processing. And how can we go about it? I see many people um, writing that to a global variable. And I absolutely dislike global variables because they are they make it very hard to follow the structure of your program. So I would prefer not to do this. There is a simple solution. Um, we just opened the, the, file the file dialog with that AC dialog flag for the window mode. That, as I showed already, that stops the code at this point until the user closes the form. But it is sufficient if we just make the form invisible. And that's what we do here. We say me visible, that's me is the form. So we make the form invisible. And then the dialog does not exist anymore as a dialog because it's hidden. And then our code will continue to run. So then we can refer to the dialog to retrieve the file name. And we don't have to uh, resort to global variables to do that. I will just add a public property to refer to the file name. We could refer right to the text box, but I don't like that either. So I create a pro public property get and I call that file name. And that's a pretty simple procedure. It just returns the um, value of that text box control. So and for good measure, we should just wrap that into an into an call to the nz function, just to prevent an error if the file name should actually be null, while that property method is called. So let's switch back to um, to our calling code. Now we open the dialog. Now the important part is we need to check if our dialog is still open. Because we close it when we hit the cancel button or if the user clicks the um, system menu to close the form. So we need to check if that form is open. There is a very simple method to do that. I write a separate procedure. I call that um, form is open and I expect the form name as the argument. Make this a little bit wider here and it's actually pretty easy to implement that. There's a sys command to check the object state of any access object. And that is AC sys cmd get object state. That's what we use here. We need to supply the type of um, object. It's AC form in our case. And the third argument is the name. So we need to use our form name um, method here. And I can just check if this works as expected form is open and I copy the form name from here. 
and I run this and it uh, returns true because our form is actually open in design view in the background. So I close that and um, try what happens now. Form is open returns false. That is correct. So it does work. And now we will use this inside our import file procedure and we say if form is open and we could paste the form name in here but that is something I don't like because now we've got this form name here and here and we are going to need it another time soon so I introduce a constant here it is form name as string and that is the form name and now I replace the hard-coded string here with our constant form name and the same goes in here form name and now I can check is the dialog form still open and now I move the message box inside that um, that procedure yeah. and we run that to check if uh, the basic logic is working so I hit F5 to run the form it's still outside the visible visual uh, the visible area and now I click import file I get the message box enter file name that works nothing happens the form the dialog form is still open I could enter a file name I don't do that yet I just assume it works just hit cancel and you see our message box has not been displayed because the form was not open we close it explicitly when we hit cancel now we run that again here's our form and now I enter some stuff in here and say import file and now we get the import completed message. Obviously, there's nothing completed yet and I'm not going to uh, program and file import here. If you want to see that, you should watch my video on the topic of CSV imports. I'll put a link in here. So, what we do now to actually write our import procedure in here or to process any dialog results if you have a different type of dialog we need to access the data entered in the form by the user and we can do that pretty easily we can refer to that forms in the form collection by name and once again we use our form name constant here and we could now um, refer to that file name text box but as I said before I don't like that very much because we need to know how that control inside the form is named and that is not the best idea so I refer to the file name property I introduced in the form and now we actually um, would need to write a run import procedure here just call that public sub run import procedure whatever that is and we supply the file name as a string and then this thing runs I'm not going to implement that really here just say Just display a message box that you can see um, the file is actually processed now and make it a little bit wider. So there's just a dummy that we can see there is something happening now. And we put in our procedure in here and pass on the file name from our dialog form. So compile the code and now I just run this once again 
and the dialog was still open in the background so the the file name is still in here I say import file and you see that is the message from our dummy import procedure I hit OK and now I get the message import completed so that the basics work now just for a little bit of uh, cosmetics inside our form to make it looking a lit little bit more um, appealing we don't need scroll bars here it's a tiny form so we um, switch that off we don't need a record selector in our form we don't need navigation buttons and we would like to center that form so that that is not displayed outside the the video recording area even if you're not recording your application on video it is much um, easier for the user if the dialog pops up right in the middle of the, sc the screen instead of somewhere in in outer border of the screen and you will not see that the first moment so we just save that and close our form go back to our procedure in here oh sorry and now we run that and you see now the form is right in the middle of the screen we can enter stuff in here we can say import file and our file obviously needs um, our procedure obviously needs some file name verification because that is not going to work in real world application but you should see the principle behind that the file name is passed to our import procedure and that is completed and we should put in um, one final step in here we should close the form now we we retrieve the file name here from the open form the invisible open form and now we don't need the form anymore and we can just close it in here because otherwise it would stay open in the background indefinitely so and once again we refer to our form name constant and we don't want to save the design of that form so uh, we supply ac save no and then we can just run it now you see I, the previous version of the procedure did not include the close stuff so the form was just invisible in the background and the data is still here that might be actually a good thing if you want to validate the data some more and if it does not pass the validation you want to redisplay the import to um, to have the user correct the data now i run the import again import completed and if i run this again now you see the file name has been cleared because now we got that close um, inside here and closed our form so very very simple you just need a couple of lines of code to implement that you need to check for the form state and you need a tiny bit of code inside the form and you have a really user-friendly and maintainable dialogue implemented now one last word about my specific example in here obviously this dialog for a file name is not very user friendly it needs a file dialog where the user can select the file from the file system if you want to know how to implement that you should watch um, a video i do on that very very soon i'll put it in the screen here so this is the core dialog functionality completed obviously for a file dialog there is something missing the actual selecting of files but that is uh, something i'm going to show you in the next video it's going to be up here and if it's not yet then please subscribe to be notified it's going to be published within the next week thank you for watching bye bye